word was saying. So I would like to, to share that with you all, okay? First, um, I wanted to talk about, because I was talking with my sister uh, one day when we was riding home, and I was talking about how, you know, I went to the chiropractor uh, a couple of months back. And he told me that due to my foot injury, like my ankle injury, that y'all know had me up in the wheelchair for back in those years and stuff, um, how it had messed up my whole body and like it was leaning to one side and that's why I was having back issues more frequently than what I experienced when I was younger. Yes, Lord. And, you know, it was just, it amazed me how, you know, you don't think about these certain parts of your body being so important to you until you hurt it or mess something up. Like, come on, bro. just trying to fold my toes down, I still can't fold my big toe down because there's something over there with that ankle and the muscles that go to it that causes it to curl up. I can't curl up all the way up on this left ankle that I messed up. And then I messed up my thumb one day trying to fight a cat. Y'all know I have to, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was wild. It was wild, okay? okay? So I messed up my thumb trying to fight with this cat um, to restrain it so it wouldn't claw and scratch up nobody else and stuff. And then when my thumb was out of commission and everything, I was like, oh, my thumb is so important to me because it was hard for me to get a grip on some things and Amen. hard for me to do things with it. And, and I was like, oh, my goodness, this is so, you know, important and everything. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's kind of like how the Bible says that we're all members of one body of Christ. And that's where I'm going to open up the scripture today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at 27. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, then healers, helpers, administrators, speakers of various kinds of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. And you know, that, that gives you like a perspective. My thumb doesn't do what my ankle does. My arm doesn't do what my head does. But we all work together. Your whole body comes together to make a functioning human being. And that's how we're supposed to do. Amen. But, you know, mm -hmm. you have some people that say, I want this position and I wish I had that gift. But what about the gifts that you already have that you were given? It's all the same Holy Spirit, but what about the gift that you have? What gift has God blessed you with and how are you using it for the kingdom? And how are you using it to make the body work together? Um, you know, there's the example that Jesus gave us up in Matthew about the three servants with the bags. To one he gave this many, and to one he gave this, and to one he gave one. And the first two went out and multiplied those bags, while the other one just hid it. Are you just going to hide your gift and your ability just because you're ashamed of it, or you think it's not good enough, and it's not as wonderful as that? Just because somebody can call out demons and expel them, does that mean that your gift of speaking a word into somebody's life and changing them is different? Come on now. Come Maybe on. somebody can lay hands and open the blinded eyes, but is it different from drawing people into the body of Christ and going out evangelizing to get people to know more about God? Is it any more or less? Come on. Yes, Lord. All gifts work together for the good of the kingdom because we have to think about these things. Amen. You know, it's all about saving souls that we need oh, to you have so many wandering lost souls that don't know anything about Christ or heard about Christ, but their only example of church is some hypocrite getting up and lying to them, saying that everybody going to heaven anyways. There are so many people that have misconceptions of what God is trying to do when all he wants us to do is love one another and work together for the kingdom. Amen. And so, like... You know, if he gave you the gift of song, and you can sing, sing to Come your Lord. Lord. If he gave you the gift of prayer to pray for people, pray for them. If he gives you the boldness to go out there and speak those things, take that boldness and speak those things. Don't just hide and sit around up in the seat. 
seat somewhere if it's for to be meek and gentle with the people because you know sometimes some people need a, a gentle and meek approach i don't have that approach um i wish i did but you know i'm just going to be grateful to god with the approach that i got that i can just go and say what i need to say yes lord amen and then there's one verse over there in first Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So whether you, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you use your gifts, whatever you do, do for the glory of God so that people that are watching you can see your lifestyle and say, oh, I want to learn more about that. Like Amen. how the apostle was saying about the blessings that's coming down and how y'all know people can see the blessings and see the radiant glow. Like I can, I can look at people and see like a glow about them or a dark cloud over them and I just know, I can just see it. Yes, Lord. And some people can see it too. So Amen. do they want to go to the darkness that looks scary or do they want to go to the, the brilliant glowing light? and want to know more about that. They want to know about it, so let your light shine through whatever you do for God. Amen. And, you know, the message from this is, it's time, people of God, to operate as one body under Christ. Amen. But then, you know, you got you to gotta think about these things because, you know, you, you got to think while you're over there doing things for the glory of God, you got to be warned, body of Christ, over there in Jude. We're going to go to Jude. I believe it's that book before Revelation. Jude is just one chapter. Like it's just 25 verses. But they hit hard and hit good. And it's so it's a warning for you know those people that are in Christ Jesus for those members of the body to make sure that you know what you're going to be up against because you know the world is against was against Jesus and if we're Straight against up. Jesus the world will be against us yes yeah, so we need yes, to be are. knowledgeable about these things verse three of Jude. Beloved, being very eager to write to you of our coming salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For admission has been secretly gained by some who long ago were designated for the condemnation, ungodly persons who pervert the grace of our God into lishness and deny our only Master and Lord Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So there will be people that already, you know, you know that there are people for Christ and there are people for Satan. Yes, There's already yeah. going to be people like that. They are already destined for that. That's it. And they allow Satan, and sometimes Satan don't even have to move it or move and say, tell them to do anything. They just want to do trouble anyways. They just want to cause trouble and division anyways. It's just, how, it's just how some people are. Amen. Going down to verse 8. Yet in like manner, these men in their dreamings defile the flesh, reject authority, and revile the glorious ones. But when the arch, uh, angel Michael, contending with the devil, disputed about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a reviling judgment upon him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these men revile whatever they do not understand, and by those things that they know by instinct as irrational animals, do they are destroyed. Do they are destroyed. Woe to them, for they walk in the way of Cain, Come and on. abandon themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error, and to perish in chorus rebellion. Those are three things of been, uh, verse 11, that give you, you know, three different examples. We know about the story of Cain and Abel. Amen. Cain killed his brother Abel because Abel gave God his first fruit. It was an animal. He gave him the best animal as a sacrifice to God because he was reversing God and doing right in the eyesight of God. Cain decided to give the leftover vegetables and stuff. And when God blessed Abel, Cain saw him getting blessed. And didn't like it. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Can't kill Abel because he didn't want to do right. 
That's it. Yeah, because you don't want to do right, don't mean that you have to go out and persecute those that do right. right. But they do it anyways. How many times have you seen so-called friends and family members shun you because you decided to do right and Amen. decide on God? This is things that will happen. And then number two, Balaam's error. Balaam is the seer that the king who wanted to get rid of God's people That's right. as God brought them over, he wanted them, wanted Balaam to curse the people. Yes. And, you know, he talked to God, even though he wasn't a God-sent person. Say that. He talked to God. And God told him, those are my people. Don't you touch them, and don't you do what the king said. And he denied the king two times, but the king kept on coming back with more stuff, more more riches, more glory, more honor. And then God said, you know what? Go ahead, go, Balaam. You, you want to you wanna be bad? Go ahead and do what you want to do. And then that's when the angel of the Lord was standing there with that sword ready to cut him down. But the donkey said, I ain't about to go. I ain't about to go. The donkey's trying to save his life. Oh, okay. trying to stop him from erring. But, you know, you know, then you have to open up his eyes and see after the donkey talked to him, like, why you beat me just because you're doing wrong and I'm trying to save you and stop you from getting killed? Sometimes you try to save these people from their mess. When you see these people in situations, you try to say, there's another way that that ain't right. That, you know, you got to love God and, and you got to do right and stuff like that. But um, how many have hurt you just because of their own greed and hurt you telling stuff? You're just acting like you're all Holy Ghost filled and condemning me and stuff like that. I can't stand it. Like you're just trying to help the person, yeah. trying to tell them the truth. Yeah. And then sometimes when the people of God stand before the people and give them the truth, they cannot take that truth Amen. because it's attacking them, it's hurting them. Mm -hmm. But when it attacks your heart and, and it weighs on your heart, that means that you can come, you now know, and can come and come from your kernel mind and repent. You can repent. All yes. right, Lord. All right. Balaam repent. said, oh, Lord, you done put this angel up here. I ain't going to mess and curse these people of God. I ain't going to touch them. That's he, it. He finally opened up his eyes because even if you say something against, uh, even if you say something to these people, Sometimes you need to say it to them regardless if it hurts their feelings because some of them may be like Balaam and say, oh, I came to my mind and, and I know that's wrong and I'm going to stop doing that. But if you just let them go by, that's just blood up on your hands. Just guilt up on your hands. Yes, Lord. If they hear, they hear. If they don't hear, you said it anyways and you mm -hmm. wipe the dust off your feet. That's it. Thank and then welcome. number three. Chorus rebellion. rebellion. I didn't know nothing about chorus rebellion. I was like, hmm. But they had a cross reference. It's from Numbers chapter 16. Korah and two of his partners um, were, you know, ministers, but they couldn't stand that Moses and Aaron had more authority and That's more um, walk and more, you know, a better relationship, I guess you could say, with God. Like they were up there because, you know, Moses was the one that lead, led them across the sea and was performing signs and miracles and God was using him. And Korah and his two partners up on his left and right <laughs> just wanted to, you know, say, hey, 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 let's let's rebel against them. So they took all these other men of, of, of the camp and said, y'all are doing wrong. Y'all are just trying to suppress us and do all this. When all the time he was over there making himself seem righteous before the other people. That's what they do. That's yeah. what they do. When all the time on their mind, they just wanted the position because it looks good. Come on, and they man. wanted to be revered like how Moses and Aaron was because people looked up to them. But it's because God placed them in those positions Say to be it. examples Say for the people so their souls can be saved. That's Aaron true. wanted to be in a position to, you know, stand in the gap for the people and their yes. sons and offer offerings to God. That was one of the things that I read about up in Korah's Rebellion that, that the people said, oh, because God had to, had to show them. God yes. had to show them. Yes. God, God did destroy 
baby and swallowed them whole yes, with all did. their possessions and family members that yes, was going did. along with that mess, swallowed them whole. And, and some of the other people that saw it said, oh, you're murderers, you're killers, and stuff like that. And, you know, God had, had, had worked on them. And, and yes, since the plague, did. God sent the plague to destroy them and wipe them out. But Moses fell to his face and he said, Aaron, go and pray for those people. Go offer sacrifices to God and stand in the gap for those people. And that's how they were saved, how the remnant was saved, because the people that God put in place stood in the gap for them. But still, Cor didn't want to see what God was doing through them. That's it. He just wanted to that's be that it. it person to say, oh, behold, it's not your glory, it's God's glory. Say he it wanted now. the glory to himself. Say it. There are people that will come into your life that wants the glory for themselves and cause come divisions on, within this body of Christ and within your, your family members and with everything else because they want to say, I am this, I am that, I have this, I have that. You better pray I to God. You better preach they the want to today. Draw the other people that don't know any better into their side, into their camp, you to go against God's God. people, to go against you, you have to be warned and know that these people will do this. All right. Oh, All right. All right. But you know, we do. We, we got to persevere. We got to persevere because over there in Jude, Jude tells us, he, he warned us, and then he say, up in verse 17, but you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time, there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. Say that. It is these who set up divisions. Yes, they are. people devoid of the Spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit. Preach. No, they don't. But you, beloved, build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ until eternal life. And convince some who doubt. Save some by snatching them out of the fire. <coughs> On some have mercy with fear, having even the garment spotted by the flesh. Jesus. He says, hold on. Save hold those that you on. can. Talk to those that have some doubt and, you know, solve their fears. Yes, yes. Bring them me. in. Bring them in because, you know, we're already got those people yes. that don't yes. have the spirit. Yes. That you can. This is yes. about snatching souls from the fire. If that soul, even though that soul may be down, snatch them up from the fire. Yes, we yes. God has no desire that people should die in sin. And that's. People of God, we should have no desire to see those people that we say that we love and care about keep on continuing in their mess. Yes, Lord. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you without yes, limits yes, before the presence will. of his glory with rejoicing, to the only God, the our only Savior, God. through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. 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 Oh, but y'all thought I was doing. I ain't doing yet. I ain't done yet. Come on, man. Let's go to Isaiah. All right. <laughs> y'all know I love you some Isaiah. Um, and this was one of the things I was just texting to my mom because my mom said, text me this. And I was trying to be cryptic with the information that I was texting her. And so I put Isaiah 7 and 9. And I said, let me go in, you know, look at Isaiah 7 and 9. And I did, and I was like, ooh, wait, this is a, this is a good word. And it just Isaiah ties. chapter 7. Yes, Isaiah chapter 7. This is another thing that, that we just have to have to learn. We just have to learn. I read it up in context, and I just, I just got to give it to you, okay? History. This is part of the history where we had been, where we're standing up in Isaiah. And during this time, you know, you know, it was just one people, the 12 tribes of Israel and stuff, because he had 12 sons. And, you know, and I think it was due to King Solomon, but I'm not sure which king it was that transgressed. And God said, you know what, there's going to be a division. So Israel split into two, Israel with 10 tribes and Judah with two tribes. That's it. Judah had more sense. 
out of, you know, the both of them. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. Judah had more sense. And Judah had more kings with sense that led the people to, you know, better ways. Like Jehoshaphat, he was the king of Judah. And he got down, rid of... Ripped them sackcloth, well, put the sackcloth on and, and prayed, and that's where we see stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He's one of those Judah kings that had sense to come to God. Okay? Over here, you know, due to Israel's non repentance and sins against God, most of their kings were puppet kings placed by other nations. That's you know, it. Kind of like the U.S. now, because, you know, we got a puppet person, you know, with us. We ain't going to talk about that. We ain't going to talk about that. Okay. So let's start with verse 1. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, king resident of Aram, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, marched up to go fight against Jerusalem, but they could not overpower it. And when I looked at that, I was like, Israel fighting against Jerusalem? Ain't they the same people? It's, it's not true. Well... Let's break it down. You have Ahaz, king of Judah, you know, the ones that got more sense, and Raisin, king of Aram, and Pekah, the puppet king of Israel. Yes, Lord. You have two siblings because they were all God's people, correct? Yes. Israel and Judah. You have two siblings, and one of the siblings decided to go with an outsider and come back and attack the younger sibling. That's what they do. Hmm. Y'all know that it's people that you care about and love the most that will go with somebody else to come They'll back do and it. tear you down. They'll do it. They'll, They'll do, do it. it. It's a lot. <laughs> it says, but they could not overpower it because, you know, God was with Judah and, and God didn't like that two siblings are fighting against each other, especially since a sibling went and took somebody that had idol gods and worshiped them idol gods and, and you know, fraternized with the enemy. Yes, Lord. Now, the house of David was told, Abraham has allied itself with Ephraim. So the hearts of Ahaz and his people were shaken as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. So here, even though Judah was protected, the people were distressed because this is like, oh, these are my people. Like, we, we came from the same, you know, ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We came from those same people. And, you know, they, they, they were getting a little weary. They were getting a little weary, you know. They were, they were like, I can't believe that this has happened, even though the plot that they set I didn't fall into it, but it still upsets on, me man. that this had to happen, that that they would actually go and fraternize with somebody else just to tear me down, just to bring me down. Like, what, what, what did I do to them to make them Not hate this? So, come on, man. To come against me and try to hurt me like this. You know, sometimes you have to... You be asking yourself, what what did I do to these people? I only love them. I only on, try to do the best for them. I, yes, I only, you know, you know, I always looked at them with love. Even Come though on, they have said this and that, I just wanted to love them. And, and here they is, coming trying to tear me down for yes, no reason. Lord. I only love them, but why is the problem? Where what is the problem? Doing? Jesus. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So over there been, God sent Isaiah and his son to tell them, you know, go to them and say to him in verse 4, Be careful, keep calm, and do not be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood. All right. that's how they were up in God's All eyes. All right. They just light I love you. it. Come on. Because of their fierce anger and, and they plotted against your, uh, plot your ruin, saying, let us invade Judah. Let us tear it apart and divide it amongst ourselves and make the son of Tabor king over it. Not only did they want to tear, tear Judah apart, they wanted to take all of Judah's stuff. My Lord! My God. Sometimes that's what it's about because, you know, we already talked about that greed that Balaam had. Well, maybe you were blessed with too much for them. Too much for them. My so they God. say, I got to take I got to take I got to tear them down. God, they leave. Woo! Woo, woo, woo. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, some of these people, they were sent to cause provision, sent to destroy the body of Christ, sent to destroy your family, yes, your Lord. mind, your heart, your spirit, and your faith in God. That's what their mission is, to destroy all these things. But over there up in verse 7, yet this is what the sovereign Lord says. It will not take place. It will not happen. Yes, Lord. For the head of Adam is Damascus. Yes. And the head of Damascus is only resin. And I, I love that up in this version. It's the NIV version that said it's only resin. It's only them. That's how God is. It's only those people. Like, what, what are you talking about? Because he says over there, they will too be shattered to be a uh, be too shattered to be a people. Come that on. means that those two people join it together trying to attack you. God will shatter that alliance to where yes, they're fighting against will. each other. To where they can't hurt you no more. Yes, he they will. can't even group up yes, together so yes. because God will shatter them and yes, shatter their will. plans and their plots. Because yes, it will not take place. It will not happen. It won't work. Oh. Over here been verse 9, because you know I said it was Isaiah verse 9, right? The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Remaliah's son. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Say that. If you don't stand firm, because God already told us it will not take place. It will not happen. So even if you're getting weary, don't, don't, don't. Renew your strength. Persevere. Go, yes, get Lord. through this. You can get through this because Jesus yes, was betrayed you by his closest person that, that was walking with him and talking with him and eating with him and laughing with him and still betrayed him for just a couple of dimes. My Lord. On the day that he came in, they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. But then when it came to get the killer Barabbas or get Jesus, they said, Barabbas. Jesus was betrayed by the people that he came to save, by the people that he came to die for, by the people that he came to teach and, and you know, bring into the kingdom. He was betrayed by them too, but he didn't lose heart. He went to that cross and he died because he knew that there were some people that now, he could you. save. Over there in Jude, like they said, snatch a soul. Jesus knew that there were some people that he could save. So even though you get weary and tired after they attack your heart like this, you just know that you just a test of your faith, just a, a test that you know it's a, just a trial that once you get through, you'll be more better and you can go yes, and snatch yes, souls yes, for God. Yes. You continue to snatch souls for God. They don't want you to save nobody. They don't want you to be up in no position to help somebody. So they try to block it, but you have to persevere and go That's on. it. Get it going. I have a couple of verses that I would like to um, go through about standing firm. <clears throat> Can somebody get Philippians 4 and 8 and somebody else get Romans 12 and 2 and then somebody else get Psalms 51 and 10? Psalm uh, what? 51 and 10. And Philippians what? Four and eight. Mm -hmm. Yes. And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind that ye may provide what is that what is that good and acceptable, acceptable and perfect will of God. From there, you know, sometimes people say there's a phrase that say if you can't beat them, join them. If you can't beat down the people that come against you, just go ahead and join them in their mess. You can't 